Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trojan Talk, Episode 4. I am Jeff Christenberry alongside TA sophomore Zach Taranko. How are you doing today, Zach? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent. Heading into the uh, Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be pretty crappy weather out there for everybody, but we've been pretty spoiled the last month, so it's it's tough to uh, to get too upset about it. But uh, we'll also have some sporting events to uh, to go all on road, on the road, though. So today we're going to focus uh, on Thornton Academy baseball. We've talked definitely about baseball in most of our episodes, but um, baseball team came in uh, this season as one of the favorites uh, in Class A for sure. Uh, lots of great pitching depth. Uh, we're going to talk to one of them in just a few minutes here. Uh, started off the season undefeated, then had to take a COVID break for a close contact, uh, something or other, for an opponent that they played. So they've had to really squeeze a lot of games in recently. Uh, they did lose yesterday to South Portland. I think it was 2 to nothing was the final score in that one. So heading into the end of the season, you know, they're still one of the best teams in Class A and hope to make a deep run. It's just, we've said before, Zach, it's just one of those teams that have always been decent but haven't really got over that hump and won a state championship. So what, what have you heard from some of the guys around about, about the baseball team and how they like their chances for this uh, this playoffs? Well, yeah, obviously uh, it's probably one of their better seasons in the last couple of years, and they've, they've done a good job, and they've won most of their doubleheaders, and, and even when they, they're splitting them, you know, winning or loss, they're winning uh, with pretty nice scores, and they're scoring a lot, which which is good, in the, at least in the first couple of games. They had a, was getting a lot of runs. Unfortunate that they couldn't win against South Portland, but they still have a doubleheader on uh, this upcoming Saturday, so hopefully they can... Uh, you know they can play with the, even with the weather, and they can finish the season with a good record. Yeah, well, so what we do uh, here is we have guests in for every week talking to TA Athletics, and it's a guy we've talked about quite a bit before, uh, baseball player, junior here, and it's Cody Bowker. So let's uh, welcome Cody into the studio. First, before we get into any other questions, let's talk about your last name. Like I said, it's uh, it's kind of been a controversy, not controversy, but talking point. Is it Bowker? Is it Boker? What are we what are we saying here? It's Bowker. Bowker. So yeah. Cody Bowker. So anybody out there, whoever needs to say your last name, it's Bowker. It's, it's a tough one, though. Yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely spelled a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So um, baseball team this year, you guys have had an interesting season. I mean, everybody's been a little bit different, obviously, this year. Um, you guys obviously have been very successful so far. You've had, you had to take a, like a quarantine break, but then you come back and had a lot of games. So uh, first, just talk about coming into the season, you guys probably knew that you had a pretty good roster, but what was it like coming back after basically having a full year off? Um, I, it was extra interesting because um, we didn't have any varsity experience on the team. Um, I'm the only person coming back from my freshman year who played in a varsity game. So none of the other kids have played um, in any varsity games, but I mean, that didn't worry me, didn't worry anybody else because we knew. Um, most other kids on our team have played travel baseball or something like that, and um, we knew that they were ready to, to start the season no matter what. Now you guys started off really hot, going undefeated for quite a while, and what do you think was the key to that, the hot start that you had? Just confidence in each other because um, baseball, I mean, I talk with um, Will Davies in the dorms all the time because he plays basketball and I play baseball, and, like, you can't really carry a team in baseball. It's kind of, um, of like a team sport. Um, and you need everybody on board in order to win games, and that's kind of how we started off. You started off like five and zero or so, and then you guys had to take a close contact break. We'll call yeah. it um, for like a, for like ten days. So what was that like? Uh, you know, having you know, guys start off so hot, and then all of a sudden it's like, sorry, you can't really play for like ten days. Yeah, uh, it, it was definitely difficult, um, just like having to stay at home and kind of isolate yourself. But um, I know I got the practice in, and I know my teammates got the practice in. We kept each other accountable, and we still, like, stayed in contact with each other um, over just, like, messages and stuff. But I definitely say it was a little bump in the road, um, just kind of like our hitting was kind of hot, and then we kind of took a break for a little bit, and we had to do individual work. Um, so that kind of cooled us off a little bit, but um, we're, we're a great team. We can kind of bring it back whenever we need it. So that's um, kind of where we're at now. And last week, so you come back, because of all those makeup games, you had like five games in a week. And yeah. What kind of strain did that put on the pitching staff especially? Um, again, it's a team sport, so everybody's right. got to contribute, and that's kind of what it came down to. And, I mean, I couldn't be any happier with how everybody performed. And, um, yeah, everybody needed to contribute, and it just kind of tested us more as a team. Um, like our team aspect of the game, everybody had to put something in, whether it was on the mound or whether it was in a different position or whether – they even had to take a break because um, they need a little bit more of a break. And, I mean, we all did well with that. There was no complaining, and that's all I can ask for. What do you think is the biggest thing between now and the end of the season uh, that you need to improve upon as a team? I mean, a yeah, baseball team has had a lot of great teams over the years, has not had many, really any state championships in a very long time despite all that talent. So what do you think is going to be the missing component here between now and the end of the year? 
Well, I definitely learned from playing in 2019 how much um, coming together as a team really works and not having any anybody who's, like, not a part of the process or um, uh, maybe is just a little less involved with the team. So I just got to keep everybody involved um, and everybody kind of working hard. And uh, But I'd say probably the most – the best thing we need to do – um, to move forward is just cut down on like little mistakes and because that that's essentially what it comes down to and if we're if we're working hard and together as a team then that just naturally comes um, with us competing and playing yeah so you're you're one of the pitchers obviously and uh, talk about the different pitches that you that you throw and how did you develop th- th- that certain kind of repertoire of pitches so I mean younger you kind of start off with like the fastball four seam fastball Um, And then as you get older and stronger, you kind of mix in some off-speed pitches. So a couple of those would be like a curveball or a change-up. And in my younger years, a curveball was definitely a stronger pitch for me. But um, as, like, I got stronger and bigger, um, you needed more ways to get people out. So I developed a cutter, and my change-up developed a lot more. And then I also have a two-seam fastball, which just is a little bit different from a four-seam. Yeah, so pretty. So you you feel comfortable throwing all five pitches? Yeah, in a certain yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely, de- definitely depends on the day. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. you kind of you can cross something now, be like that pitch is not working. Yeah. We're not throwing that. Or every time I throw that pitch is right down the middle, and somebody's gonna take me four hundred feet. But yeah, um, definitely. Um, have worked a lot on becoming comfortable with all five pitches. Yeah, it seems like when people are younger, the curveball is just, no, the one everyone throws, but the problem is that obviously kids get used to hitting it. Exactly. And then you, you really need a nasty exactly. one to, to make it work. Exactly. And yeah. that and that's how it works is like you have um, your other pitches make another pitch better. So your, your curveball makes your fastball look better. Your cutter makes your fastball and curveball look better. So the more you can kind of mix it, um, the more – effective you are. Curveball gets all the attention, but really what the kids should be doing is it developing the change up, especially yes, if you throw it fast, that change definitely. up is nasty. What what can definitely. you hit it? What so let's, let's get to the you know the manly stuff. How fast can you throw it if, uh, uh, a fastball? In a game. Let's just say you're really in a game. Up. Oh I'd hope up to ninety. Okay. But I I have been I've hit eighty nine and eighty eight before, so if I had to say where I sit I'd probably say mid to high eighties, but I could probably get it up to ninety. That's how, what does that feel to throw? Because we all do the speed pitch at Old Orchard Beach or yeah. whatever else. We're like throwing as hard as you can. It's like 73. Yeah. 70. So yeah. what does it feel like to throw like a 90-mile-an-hour um, fastball? It, accurately, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it definitely comes with a lot. There's a lot of mechanics involved, um, and I work on those all the time. And people would think it puts a lot of strain on your arm, but I really – I've just kind of trained myself and have a lot of mobility in my arm, so I'm able to throw it, and I can throw it. I mean, I think I threw – over 100 pitches against Scarborough, and then 100 pitches on Thursday against South Portland, and I'm still ready to roll. Nice, nice. So personally, you know, you've committed to verbally to Georgetown to play baseball. What yep. was that? What was that like? What was the process like? And what what about that school? Obviously, it's a very famous school. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know too much about it, down in the D.C. area. So what what was that process like? And why did you commit so early? Um. It was definitely a weird experience just because of um, everything with COVID going on. So I've actually never met the coach in person. Um, and, but I still like feel confident in my decision. So he, Coach Thompson, his name is Edwin Thompson. He's from Maine. So he grew up in J Maine and, um, coached at Farmington, coached at Bates, and then ended up getting a job at Duke as the recruiting coordinator and then head coach at Eastern Kentucky and then found a job at Georgetown. Um, and we just met through kind of recruiting stuff. I'd come out with like videos and stuff because that's all we could do because they couldn't come and see us play. And um, word of mouth, he knew, knows a lot of people in Maine. So I was like, hey, how's Cody doing? Have you ever seen Cody play? Like stuff like that. Um, and that's how it kind of came about. And I mean, since I was 10, 11, 12 years old, I've always said, I want to go down south. It's too cold in Maine. I need <laughs> to go down south. And I was just far south enough where like spring kind of comes a little quicker. Um, and then educational perspective, um, I mean, I, I've transferred to TA. I came to TA my freshman year and um, looking for an academic challenge, and that's exactly what I got. And, I mean, same thing, go down to D.C. and looking for the same academic challenge down there. Now, obviously, there's been some recent success with uh, Thornton players in, in, in the college ranks, especially look at Cam Seymour hitting the walk-off home run for USM to send them to the NCAA tournament. So what, what would it 
what what is your gonna what's your goal in college to be? I mean, everyone wants to be drafted, obviously, at some point. But like, what is? Do you have like a, a two, three, four year plan, or what? Are you, what, what are you thinking? I mean, definitely the end goal is I'd, I'd love to get drafted. And I, I just, like, I love the game so much. I mean, I've talked to Coach Thompson and then Coach uh, LaRiviere, and it's like, oh, what position are you going to play? Like, And I'm like, wherever you need me. So, right. I mean, I'll go down there, and I'd like the chance to pitch and play the outfield and hit, so do whatever the team needs to win. And I just want to be able to um, compete for four years because it's so much fun. Ex even, like, here at TA – like just competing and competing every day you go on the field that I just want to do the same thing down there now you mentioned transferring here as your fr as your freshman year and what has it been like commuting I mean you, you how far do you come every day like what is that process like and and, uh, and why did you choose TA as a place to come so first of all I just have to thank my parents because freshman and sophomore year when I didn't have my license they drove me back and forth a lot um, and then I have to thank my second family, I'm going to call them the Davies, because I stay with the Davies a lot throughout the year, because driving an hour back um, to Bodenham is just not, it's not worth it some days. So I, I stay with them a lot, and they've taken care of me and kind of molded me who I am as long, also just seeing my family. But once uh, this year and next year, like I've been able to drive, so if my parents say, hey Cody, we need you home, I'll, I'll go home and um, but I mean, the drive's kind of cruise control for me. I right. <laughs> drive, so I dr times. drive myself. Yeah, yeah. that uh, I've done it so many times that it's pretty easy. It's pretty what made you look at TA in, in in the beginning? Um, just looking for a challenge. I mean, my school just wasn't the right fit for me, and um, it was hard for me to leave all my friends. But um, knowing that, like the academic challenges, and then um, coming to a few TA open houses and seeing what it had to offer, it just like perfect for me and like it, it's been perfect since my freshman year I, zero complaints awesome and just kind of wrapping up a general baseball question a lot of uh, debate in the big world about baseball and how it's changed and everyone is looking you know for home runs they don't care about striking out that much and talk about pace of play um what are, what are your thoughts on it? As somebody who plays the game every single day you know do you feel like the game at the at the higher levels needs some tweaking or do you do you just you know, do you find it that people are just trying to look to nitpick? Well, I think everybody has, like, different parts of their game. Like, um, Coach Thompson actually said it the best, and that's what really impressed me about him is how he talked about it. There's different types of hitters. You got your speedy, hit ground balls, line drives, get on base, steal bases hitters, and then you kind of have your combo hitters, like doubles, triples, a couple home runs, like hits for a little bit of average, like all that stuff, which is where I'd probably put myself. And then there's your... Uh, one for ten with a 450 foot home run that gets the crowd going or something like that but um, I think everybody has to just play their game and then you just find the right people to make a team so I mean I think that's what coaches look for I mean it's the same thing on the mound like you'll get guys who throw 110 miles an hour and then that are in the big leagues and then you have guys who throw maybe high 80s that are in the big leagues and it's just um, a mix of those people so I, I'd say I, I like watching the game kind of how it is, and, like, everybody has different aspects. Like, you can watch the game, and you can watch stellar defensive highlights, and then you may see that same guy get up to the plate, and he may not hit the ball 400 feet, and that's somebody else's job on the team is right. to hit the ball 400 feet. So that's just kind of how – that's the team aspect of the game is that it kind of all blends together. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's a evolving. All the sports are evolving. But baseball seems to be the one that there's this huge battle between traditionalists and don't want to change the game and yeah. those who you know want to watch it day to day. To day. So, yep. well, thanks for joining us. I do want to give you a chance if you want to give a shout out to any of your uh, social medias if you out there, your Instagram or Snapchat or, Insta or uh, TikTok. Uh, I mean, I'll put my Instagram out it. there. It's just it's just Cody Bowker. Um, Bowker, we know yep, that. Now. Bowker, yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing we learned today is Bowker. Yeah. All right, appreciate it, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Yep. Thank you so much. All right, so as you heard from Cody, you know, the team's pretty confident here going into the end of the year, and, boy, I would love to throw a, a fastball that would touch 90. I think that would be that'd be pretty amazing. And not as much as I'd love to dunk a basketball once on a 10-foot hoop, yeah. which is just never going to happen. I, I got, I'm at the age now where i got to accept that. But that would be pretty cool to be able to dunk and also throw a fastball because, again, as I mentioned in the interview, you know, you always go to those carnival rides and you go to the fast pitch and you throw it as hard as you can, and it's like 71, 72, and you just wonder how the heck someone throws it that fast. But uh, have you played baseball at all growing up or not a baseball guy? I used to play t-ball a little bit. Um, but <laughs> other than that, I, I, uh, I didn't know. I, I stayed with mostly soccer and basketball and then over to soccer the last gotcha. couple of years. So I, I, uh, I played baseball through, you know, 
Um, you know, it's interesting too if anybody's listening. Mr. Martin and I have a f- actually a funny baseball story together. So Mr. Martin was a great athlete uh, as a young guy. He probably still is, but um, so we were the same age, but. It used to be in Little League here in Saco that there were two Little Leagues. There was Saco Little League and there's Merrimont Little League. Um, Merrimont Little League being over kind of door, Industrial Park Road, kind of North Saco, and Saco Little League down toward the beach where I used to live. So I was part of Saco Little League, and both would have different All Star teams, um, and both teams were pretty good. Um, Merrimont had a little bit more money because they did the Christmas tree sale. Yeah. So I remember it's just one of those little things. They when they had Merrimont, their their colors were green and yellow. They used to have their names etched in the back of their hats, their adjustable yep. hats. The coolest thing ever. Like, we were so <laughs> jealous of them. Um, anyway, so when we were small stars, which are 9- and 10-year-old all-stars, uh, I was on Saco, and uh, Ke- and Mr. Martin Keel was on, on Merrimont, and Keel was a catcher. Anyway, long story short, it gets to, like, the sixth inning. We're the underdogs. Um, we're down by one run, two outs in the sixth inning. Uh-huh. Um, I was – not, let's just say I'm not a speed demon. I've never been, like, the <laughs> biggest athlete in the world. I got thir- th- third base somehow. Uh, and the coach of the team is actually my coach of the Little League team. And he looks at me, and he goes, hey, steal home. And I looked at him like, what? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Because first of all, like, I don't steal home much anyway. But, like, this yeah. Keel Martin at the time was, like, you know, he's this stud catcher, best player on the team. Um, so, and so I'm like, okay. So the next pitch, <laughs> for some reason, Mr. Martin didn't look down my way. And as soon as he cocked his arm back to throw it, I took off. And somehow I kind of blacked out, and I ended up being safe because the pitcher didn't get the ball back fast enough. So we tied the game. I get mobbed at home plate. We end up winning the game in extra innings. So Mr. Martin, who went on to some great uh, you know, great career, both at Thornton Academy and at St. Joe's, yep. um, I'll always remind him, small stars, 10-year-olds, I owned you as a catcher. <laughs> so anyway, that's a total aside there. So th- that was basically the highlight of my baseball career when I was 10 years old. You know, I played up until I was 15. I tried out for the freshman team here at TA, got cut, and that was the last time I ever played. Uh, but anyway, so that's what's bas- going on in baseball. So, again, good luck to them. Uh, their season's almost over. They're definitely one of the favorites in Class A. Let's talk a little bit, Zach, about the other teams as we head towards the playoffs. Some teams are done. Some teams have one game left. So why don't you just run down the team's records right now and, and, and the games they have remaining, and then we'll discuss a little bit. Yeah, so obviously, as I said before, baseball is 10-3. and three. They have two games on Saturday, a doubleheader at 10 and noon uh, at home against Westbrook. Uh, last two games of the season for them. Boys Lacrosse is 7-4. and four. They have one more game today at 5.30 at Wyndham. Uh, it would be – obviously, I don't think that they're stuck in, what, six – for playoffs anyways. Right so around there. But it looks like they might play Scarborough instead of Gorham. I know a couple of weeks ago we mentioned that. I talked to Coach Hersey. He, he said the heel points are, quote, all screwed up, and he thinks that Scarborough may be the team they play in the playoffs, not Gorham. And they have beat – they had lost Scarborough earlier in the season, and they had beat him in, like, a last second. Great matchup. Yeah, last second yeah. game late in the season. Um, we have softball, which is 9-4. and four. Their season is over. They ended on a loss on Wednesday to Gorham, but obviously had a great season and will uh, do well in the playoffs. And then girls lacrosse is 5-5 five and five with one more game. Uh, next Tuesday at South Portland. Hopefully they can stay above 500. Had, not had a bad season, but um, obviously uh, struggles against some, some of the better teams. Yeah, I think they – I think especially I, – I, when I look at all the teams, I think what's interesting is I feel like they all pretty much performed the way we thought they would. Like yep. Girls across came in with question marks. And 5-5, five and five, whether they're 6-5 and five or 5-6 five and six in the end, yeah. probably about where, you know, maybe a little bit better. I know Coach Hurst what, – what's boys across 10-3 and three, you said? Uh, boy, uh, boys across is seven and four. Seven and four, and yeah. I think I mentioned before that Coach Hersey thought eight and four, nine and four were probably about where they were going to be. So um, it's just interesting how it, it works out that way. Um, who, as far as who can make a run, boys across is, is always out there. Lacrosse, boys across is a sport where you can make a deep run. Girls across a lot more difficult. You know, yeah. Um, um, softball and, and baseball. I mean, boy, baseball's had so many years where they've had great teams, great records, and they host a first round playoff game and just yeah. doesn't go well because the pitcher doesn't have a good day. So. We'll see. So, again, we're for live streams, you know, won't be doing any more home live streams because we don't have any home playoff games uh, for lacrosse. But uh, maybe we'll do the boys across away game or maybe the girls across one. We'll have to, we'll have to take a look at that. So, um, mentioning venues, actually. So, I wanted to ask this question. So, we've talked a little bit before. What's the best game to go to as a, as a fan? What about the best venue? So, basically, you have the baseball stadium, baseball, softball will combine. You have the football stadium for any sport, and you have the basketball stadium. And I don't want you to just think about – I want you to think bigger. You know, I want you to think. Um, of course, you don't even go to the games much as a fan anymore. You're going as a broadcaster. Yeah, but either it. way, think about other the amenities, the weather, the food, everything that goes on in the concessions. Because I know you're a concession stand guy because you've been upset that there hasn't been any booster concessions yep. this spring. Yeah. So, what's your favorite? Uh, all things considered, what's your favorite place to watch a game? Um, I, I do love the stadium. I think that there's a bigger food choice, so it, it it's pretty good and. 
Uh, but I, sometimes I think the amount of people in the state stadium, like too overcrowded, kind of gets in the way. There's a lot of people moving at the same time. I, I do like the food in, in the basketball arena, and when I used to go as a fan, uh, it was nice to to go in and sit and watch the game and even sit in the fan section. Um, so I think that that's gonna have to be my favorite venue. It can get really really hot in there and really congested, I, which you know. It's something that you don't really think about anymore with COVID. You don't think that, you know, wow, you know, before COVID, we were all sitting packed into a, a hot gym with no ventilation. Um, but, yeah, that, that's my favorite venue at TA. It's interesting. I would, it's, it's tough because I agree the food at, at football is great. Like, yeah. there will be games where I, where I go and it's like I'm about to broadcast a game and I'm starving. I'll go grab a burger and they just – I don't know. They're one of those burgers that they probably made like an hour before, but they just they, – they're awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because I have not – I, I rarely go to games now as a fan. Like, I can't remember the last time I paid to go to a high school sporting event. Yep. Like, it's been over 10 years because I worked at TA and then I worked in TV before, so I'd always get in for free and never really sit in the stands. I would say bat, I would say Linnell Gymnasium because I remember as a student, I, my biggest memories were going to basketball games because yep. even though football games, we were a good team. I don't know, something about that small atmosphere – the ref, you know, the refs can hear you. You know, the opponents can hear you. You know, my friends were getting fights with other fans, not fights, not, you know, verbal fights. You know, at, yeah. with the opposing because you're because the student section is right across from where the opposing fans sit. So I would say uh, Linnell Gymnasium. Not to say that the food there is bad either, but it's. Just, it, I feel like there they have like more like pizza and popcorn and stuff, and I'm sometimes just want a burger. So um, interesting debate there. Okay, so moving on to some pro sports. Bruins Islanders. Who you got? Oh, this is hard. I, as a Bruins fan, uh, who was I'm very happy with how they played against the Capitals, especially in the last couple of games. Um, really took control there. I I hope the Bruins win. I would like to see the Bruins go and 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 go for the cup. I actually expect them to lose in seven. I I okay. I think that they're gonna lose. I just the way the Islanders played against Pittsburgh makes me believe that they're gonna play exceptional in the in the playoffs. And you look at the season; the Bruins only were able to break through and beat them in the last two games of the of their uh, matchup during the season. They played them, I think, eight times, and they lost like five of them. And they didn't play well at all. Uh, I just don't think that the Bruins are going to be able to play good. I think that um, Rask will probably sit for a couple games, and they'll bring Swayman in. And Swayman, mm-hmm. Swayman probably won't play well. He's he's young, uh, but. I think they've had a great season, and I, I hope they can win. I'm not going to count anybody out. Uh, obviously, what, first game's on Saturday night, which will be nice yep. to watch. Uh, but, you know, home ice advantage, that's that's the good part, though, yep. that we got home ice advantage. And I think after – is it game one, the Huffle crowd, or after game one, the Huffle crowd? Um, felt, it's the 29th, so it'll be it'll be tomorrow. First, okay, yep, so, so the whole crowd. Yeah, honestly, but, I don't I don't think the layoffs gonna have a big deal in the series. Maybe part of game one. I, everyone everyone I've talked to, and certainly I'm not the biggest hockey guy. Everyone says it's pretty much a toss up series. The Bruins are favored in Vegas, yeah. um, but everyone's like six or seven games definitely. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like I feel like the Bruins will take it in in seven because as, as a kind of think big picture. I mean, this group has been together for like ten years. Like yeah. if you think Bergeron and all these other guys and Char's not here anymore, but. Like, how many more runs do they really have in them? I mean, it's going to be interesting. This team in five years is going to look so different than it does now. Yeah. Like, all these guys that have been around forever. So, will that little bit put them over the top being like, is this going to be our last chance to get over that hump? And it should be a great series, I think. I think if any team wins in 4-5, or five, it's a real shocker. Unless, again, unless one goalie stands on his head and, and Rast melts down or something. But yeah. I, don't, I don't see it happening. I think a seven-game series would be will be interesting one series that's not going to be seven games is celtics nets okay let's talk <laughs> about the celtics so let's just assume that it's a sweep okay or maybe a gentleman sweep maybe the, the celtics eke one out game two is an absolute embarrassment um for the celtics organization you know they basically in the second, first quarter basically quit and that was it yeah um so let's assume that the nets are going to move on um but lots of debates about the celtics i mean this is probably the hottest team that's debated because you do have this camp that's like we're on the right path we're going to be fine another part is like you need to do something so I'm gonna make you Zach Taranko, GM of the Celtics starting next week. What what is the what's the what's the major move that you make, or do you not make any moves at all? I would try and bring in a center. I don't know why they got rid of Tice in free agency. I think he was he was great. I don't think Tristan Ch- Tristan Thompson is there. I don't think that Fournier has done much. I I it's hard because. You, th- you look at, okay, let's build around Tatum, but Tatum's not going to want to be there if they can't do anything. So this offseason is going to be pretty important for them. Um, I mean, I would probably move out some of the the players that don't really need to be there, like Tristan Thompson and Fournier and Marcus Smart. You know, I, I, I would maybe also move on from Kemba Walker. The only people that I would definitely keep would be like Jalen Brown and Tatum. That's really – it's like there's not much else that you really want to keep there. Um 
This is the problem. Is there's not a whole lot, that, whole lot they can do. They yep. don't, they're negative twenty two million on the cap. Yeah. Okay, going into next year, um, you, you're not going to get a whole lot of value for someone like Marcus Smart because if he he'd be great as sixth or seventh man on a championship contender. Like he can yep. come in and, and do that. Yeah. But those teams are not going to give you that much. If they give you draft pick, it's going to be worthless. And there are you know, so there's really not much I can do. That's the sad thing. Um, you know, Tatum's deal doesn't kick in until after this year's extension, so he still has five years. So. The the I mean when you look back let's let's just fast forward three years and let's say it's not going well and it ends up getting blown up the, the move that you can look at that really screwed this team over was the Kemba Walker signing yes you know they they signed him to a max contract he still has, he still has two more years on the contract one of them is a player option who's obviously he's going to take yeah but he can't play like he he can play some nights but can he play the whole season no he's too similar to Brown and Tatum okay you need yep. a big you need someone like you know. Anthony Davis is, you know, you're not going to get LeBron and Anthony Davis on every team. I get that. Yeah. But even like Butler and Adebayo, which I know they're probably going to lose to Milwaukee this year. Oh yeah, the three zero, the down three zero. Yeah. So you have, but you still have, you have a little bit of contrast. But right now you get Tatum, Brown, and Kemba Walker. They're all scorers, or two of them are scorers at least. And and Brown is kind of a little bit of a multi, you know, both 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 way guy. It's tough. So what do you? I mean, what are you going to do? But here's the problem, though. It's like, was Kemba the only one that would come here? Like that's when he, when you yeah. look at that max signing. It's like okay, we don't want to not sign a max player, but he has a UConn connection. So like, when you when you look at why did they sign him, it's like well maybe who's the only one that would come here? And yeah. so you have yeah. to think take that in consideration. I don't envy the Celtics right now. I think in talking to some of my my friends who are Celtics fans that are real green teamers, they just think we got to wait it out, wait two or three years, wait for the Nets to break up, wait for, and it's, they're all assuming that Brown and Tatum are going to get better year after year after year after year, and that's going to lead them to a title. So I just I don't know until Kemba Walker's contract comes off, he can't really do anything. Because yeah. you're not going to trade him for anything, so it's tough, tough spot. I, I just don't think that this year has really got him anything. I mean, yes, they had some COVID issues, some some injury issues, but they're a 500 team, and they'll be a little bit better than a 500 team. But you look around the, the conference, 76ers finally got a coach. We'll see how they do. Yep. Milwaukee's still going to be a threat as, as far as Giannis is there. The Nets are going to be the top of the league. And then you still have the Heat out there. So you're talking sixth, seventh best team in the East. Maybe the maybe you can pop up to five or four. Yeah. Not even including the out West. So. Tough spot for the Celtics. Um, I don't, I don't envy them, but this series has just been a, a kind of a joke. So maybe, maybe at home, you know, the whole Kyrie Irving thing with the racist, you know, the, the subtle racism thing, which I think he's a just a coward. I think he just doesn't want to deal with deal with the fans, and so he yeah. he he takes the offensive. Um, I hope he gets booed uh, uncontrollably. So tonight, they play tonight. Uh, it's not full capacity, but then when they play probably Sunday or Monday, they'll have full capacity. But yeah. um, it just still won't matter because the Nets are going to win because they're just they're just a. It's They're just a team. It's going to be Lakers. Like I said, Lakers Nets. That's what I'm thinking. Lakers got back on track. I, last I night. don't think the Lakers are going to do it. I don't think Phoenix is going to win. I think Phoenix is never like just not playoff ready. Yeah. But like somebody else is going to knock them down because it's just too too many injuries. But I I'm I'm sad that the Jazz aren't beating Memphis. I I like the Jazz. I think the Jazz are good. I think they really stepped through this year. And then like. You know, John Morant drops forty-seven. They, yep. they they play well, but the first game they lost. Like they, they should have won yeah. that game, but yeah. Know. Some some lot of great. I mean, you look at a lot of great players that way. So you get Jokic, you get Doncic, like John Morant, like guys who are kind of alone in their teams, and you just wonder how long till they all team up. You know, yeah. they're gonna be the next generation that teams up. So yeah. Okay, moving on to football. Really, only one discussion this week. And that's Julio Jones, your boy. Um, oh maybe wants Lord. out. Maybe coming to to New England. What do you what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you would you? Be, I think you said you you wouldn't be sad to see him go. No, I mean he. People keep telling me he's older and he's not worth anything, which I think is absurd. He's got a huge contract. He's older. He is. He's what thirty-two. Yeah, he's not worth nothing. I mean, I, I'll definitely say that. That's one of the things I find so surprising is that like we're like we talk about sports players, we're like, oh, LeBron James is thirty-six. Wow, he's so old. Yeah, and that's my age right there. Yeah, we feel really old. <laughs> like, like he's, he's like, thirty-six. He feels like fifty to my eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, I we have Calvin Ridley. We just picked up Kyle Pitts, so it's not like we have nothing. And I know that we could get a lot for Julio Jones. I I don't know why he wants to go somewhere else. I think it's because they can't, they didn't play well last year. I think they'll they'll try to do they'll hopefully this year he'll stay at least this year and try to win something. But I mean, I don't know. He there's like he's it's up in the air because you know I've I've heard that AJ Brown wants him to go play in Tennessee and careful what you wish for AJ. Yeah, he he made Tulio Jones made a comment about wanting to go to Dallas and now it's like oh you want to go to Dallas? No, yeah. no. I don't know. I, hopefully, if he goes somewhere, it's not the Patriots because I don't like the Patriots and I wouldn't <laughs> want to see him help them do anything. I hope I also hope it's not. Tampa Bay, because I just don't want to. See I don't it. see that happening. Honestly, here are the two pl- places I see him going. I see him going to Green Bay. You know, really? if you're the Packers, 
and you already have Devontae Adams, and you want to get you want to get Aaron Rodgers back into the fold, you say, all right, we're going to get you Julio Jones too. Boom, yeah. there you go. Or another interesting one I've heard is the Chargers. So the Chargers oh, yeah. don't – if they, had, they already have Keenan Allen, but you add him to that young quarterback. The yep. problem, though, is Julio Jones would probably rather go to Green Bay because he wants to win now. That's that's what he's doing. Yeah. I don't see him coming to New England is, at all. Way too much money. Is Aaron Rodgers – What is where is he right now? I, he's I, not gone to minicamp. He's not showing up, basically sitting out right now. So he's basically said he doesn't like the Green Bay philosophy. Whatever that means. So, so it's bringing Julio Jones, and I'll come back and play that. I mean, really, yeah. I, if you're the, if Green Bay, it's like throw it at the wall, see what happens. I mean, give up a draft pick, who cares? You can get Julio and have a chance to get over the top, but they're still not going to help their defense as they as yeah. we saw. All right, last uh, big discussion for today is a local one about basketball. So the main Red Claws are no more. The main Red Claws are now the main Celtics. They last week they announced a huge rebranding. Um, they were bought by the Celtics organization like three years ago, two or three years ago. Yep. Um, so it's not totally surprising that they did a rebrand, but it's interesting. So they basically they rebranded the Celtics with no specific main ties, but they have a green lobster now, which doesn't really exist. So what are your thoughts on the, the, the change? Because it actually had quite a backlash on social media. Well, yeah, I mean, most of the – what is this? Is it D-League or G-League? Is it, it's the G-League It's now. the G-League, yeah. yeah. I think it used to be the D-League. It used to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they most of the teams have different names, just like the AHL with the NHL. The teams right. have different names. I know a couple of them, like I think the Warriors, their G League team is something Warriors. I don't yeah. know where they play. Uh, I'm I'm not surprised. I don't like the Green Lobster. Um, I I, but it, you know it is what it is. You know, you're gonna buy them out. They're gonna change it some way. But I think that the Twitter thing with not being able to keep their username was was pretty. That funny. was interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's some squatting there. Yeah, I I. I the thing I, d- I dislike most about it is the logo. I think the logo is hideous. Like if you're gonna go Celtics and go Celtics, like yeah. I understand why you want to brand it, which is gonna be weird though. Saying to your friend, "Hey, I'm going to a Celtics game tonight." Like really going to Boston? No, no, no. Go to the Expo. Like yeah. that's gonna be a little awkward. <laughs> um, but the, keeping the Green Lobster, like trying to placate people, like there are no Green Lobsters. They yeah. don't exist. Yeah. Okay, maybe the one of those one in a million ones that you see on the news sometimes. But no, they're the Red Claws. I will say this: the one thing I'm happy is the main Red Claws had like the most hideous commercial. Um, oh I don't know if you God. remember, like, yeah. when I say red, y'all say, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's worse than the Sea Dogs one, that, that yeah. song that they sing. So I'm not ha- I'm not sad to see that go, um, but uh, I don't go to many Red Claws games. I, I covered them for a blog I used to work for. That was kind of cool to see the guys up close, and you get to see some players. I know it's a cool atmosphere. I just haven't gone in, in a few years, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird just to name them the exact same exact same thing, yeah. but anyway. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of strong opinions out there. A lot of people are not happy about that. All right, well, we're going to wrap things up here. Just a quick reminder of some of the events coming up. Uh, we have baccalaureate of the class of 2021 that's going to be aired one week from today next uh, friday june 4th at 7 p.m you can check that out right on the ta facebook page it's facebook.com slash thornton academy uh, and then graduation of the class of 2021 live from hill stadium on sunday june 6th at one o'clock if it rains it'll be rescheduled for monday night at 7 p.m most likely going to be rescheduled i've heard there's rain is supposed to happen on that sunday <laughs> well i was supposed to have a party this sunday and it turned out to be it's going to be 55 and rainy so yeah. i had to cancel it so i'm not too happy about the main weather yeah. right now uh, so we'll see. Honestly, again, I said I know it's really a hassle, but a Monday night graduation would be kind of cool. I know. That'd be kind of sweet. That'd be, that'd be, that'd First be, that'd ever be cool. night graduation. But we'll see. So check that out. That's going to be on the TA Facebook page. You can see it live uh, from us. Zach, any other thoughts here as we head towards this uh, long Memorial Day weekend? No, I mean, obviously the weather is, is a sad one. Memorial Day weekend is usually supposed to be really nice. Kick off a summer usually. Yeah, it's the it's it's kind of the turning point, and I think that especially with COVID year, it's the turning point. Like, okay, we're past Memorial Day. Let's go to the summer. But, you know, a couple more weeks of school left. Playoffs are in motion. It's a good time to enjoy sports and, and be ready for the summer. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us and thank our guest, Cody Bowker of the baseball team. Now we know that it's Bowker forever. Bowker. It's 100%. All good. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining us. Next week, we are going to have a special guest. Besides the athletic guest, we're going to have Cal Cristoforo, who former, basically the former Zach Taranko, um, broadcasted with us for several years and now is at Syracuse University doing some really cool things in sports broadcasting. So we'll talk to Cal next week. Other than that, enjoy your nice long weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.